Um, I'm Marie-Soleil Cloutier. Alors, bon matin, tout le monde. I'm going to say my speech in, in French. What do you think about that? No? It's, it's a real pleasure for me to be here this morning as, as chair of the conference and um, a new president of CARS. Um, really welcome to all of you to the 2018 um, Canadian Association of Road Safety Professional Conference here in Victoria. Really happy to be here. The wind is a bit chilly, but it's beautiful out there, right? Um, this year, it's the 28th edition of CARSP. Um, we have over 270 delegates total. This is a record year, so kudos to all the organizing committee. Um, especially a, a, a special thank to um, our co-host, Road Safety BC. Um, where Road Safety BC is within the Minister of Public Safety and Solicitor General who have partnered with us, bringing you this year's conference, and it's, it's a real success already, and we haven't started, right? Um, we have, um, as I said, over 270 delegates from ac across the world, mostly Canada, but United States, Australia, India, Italy, and even other countries. Um, we work also in a, a, a large area of discipline, um, research, legislation, policy development, public health, engineering, enforcement, and even more discipline. And this is really what CARSP is, a multidisciplinary conference, a multidisciplinary association, all related to road safety. Um, talking about partnership, uh, as I said, Road Safety Work is our co-host. They have spent countless hours helping us with the planning stages and have contributed to us financially also. So big thank you to be a conference sponsor also. Talking about sponsors, I really would like to um, extend my thank you to our silver sponsor. We got Alcolock, the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure of BC, WorkSafe BC, and, and obviously Road Safety BC, as I just said. Um, we have many more sponsors. We got exhibitors downstairs also that you will have the time to go um, take a look. So please do. Uh, those folks do work uh, to improve road safety everywhere. And um, we really need those, those partners to make this conference happen. Um, and I'm, I'm sure you're all well aware of at that point. Um, the theme of this year's conference is Next Generation Transportation, the Future of Road Safety. Um, it was chosen to emphasize um, that a, a holistic next generation perspective on road safety is needed to make stronger progress. Um, we, are getting, we are improving ourselves in Canada and elsewhere, but it's never enough, obviously, right? Um, we want, what do we want, obviously, is to reduce motor vehicle crash-related deaths. And um, in order to do so, you'll be able to, in the next two or uh, three days to actually see many ways where we can achieve them. Uh, we hope you will enjoy the keynotes, the panels, the paper sessions. Um, big thank you to our program committee, to our uh, conference committee, to have put that all together also. Um, You'll, you'll have, um, uh, the, uh, I'm sure you'll have the pleasure to meet them at some point uh, around those next three days. Um, I would now like to introduce you British Columbia's Deputy Solicitor General, uh, Mr. Mark Sieben. Uh, Mr. Sieben has been a Deputy Minister in BC for over seven years, with more than 25 years in the public service. Um, don't, so, welcome, Mark. Uh, good morning, and uh, thank you, Marie Soyer, and uh, welcome everyone uh, to Victoria. Uh, first of all, uh, congratulations to the, the organizing committee for putting on such a, uh, such a great show. It's uh, terrific to see so many people here in, in the room today on, uh, on topics that are very, very relevant and, uh, and very much of interest here in, in British Columbia. Uh, as was noted, I have, the, uh, I have the pleasure to introduce Minister Mike Farnworth. Uh, I was thinking earlier th this morning, Minister, that uh, somehow it's, uh, it's only, what, 10, 10 and a half months into our, into our, uh, our, 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 our partnership here. Uh, and uh, it, it, it struck me that it, it seems much longer, but in a good way. Uh, it's been uh, two busy legislative sessions, uh, which uh, is even more so busy for Minister Farnworth given. He's also the house leader for government, of, uh, which uh, makes for very busy days when the legislature is sitting over just across the, the bay there. 
Uh, he's also the chair of the Legislation Review Committee here in, uh, in BC. Uh, in, in, uh, in regard to all things uh, uh, road safety, uh, Sam and his team uh, working through, uh, uh, through the Minister's office has been uh, very successful over this uh, short juncture of time too. Uh, and I'll, I'll only name two uh, relatively sort of high profile uh, type of initiatives that we're really sort of pleased with, uh, but, um, but it's, that's a short list of a much longer list. Uh, one is the successful uh, implementation of, of, of uh, e-ticketing of uh, a pilot uh, which recently wrapped up and we look forward to bringing the results of that to government for consideration of what we anticipate hopefully will be a, a, a provincial wide implementation. And the second is the, the passage of a, a significant series of amendments to the Motor Vehicle Act in conjunction with the, uh, the federal uh, um, cannabis agenda. So we were successful in passing. Uh, three bills here in BC pertaining to our, our readiness for eventual sort of legalization of, of cannabis. Uh, so with, uh, with that, congratulations and that welcome. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, go ahead with uh, the, the formal part of, of the introduction for, for Minister Farnworth. Uh, Minister Farnworth was elected as MLA for Port Coquitlam in 2017. He was first elected as MLA for Port Coquitlam, Burke Mountain in 1991 and re-elected in 1996 2005, 2009, and 2013. He also served as the official opposition spokesperson for justice and the official opposition caucus house leader. Minister Farnworth was raised in Port Coquitlam and has lived there for over 40 years. He earned a bachelor's degree in geography at SFU, Simon Fraser University, for those from out of the province, and was elected to Port Coquitlam City Council for three terms in 1983, 85, and 1990. As MLA, he served in numerous cabinet positions, including Minister of Health and Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. And I can tell you, it's been a, a pleasure uh, working with Minister Farnworth uh, uh, in conjunction with his experience from being a, a minister in the previous, uh, in the previous government. It's uh, made life a lot easier for myself and, and my team. From 2001 to, two, to 20, 2004, Minister Farnworth worked in Bulgaria, the Balkans, and most recently Iraq on democratic government programs to help build multi-party democracies in former one-party states. Thank you, Minister, for being here, and we look forward to hearing your remarks. Thank you, uh, Mark, and thank you, Maurice Soleil, uh, for your kind introduction. And <clears throat> before I get into the main body of my speech, I just wanted to make a, a brief comment. Um, looking at the, the title, The Future of Road Safety, um, I don't think anything has been more relevant than that right now, um, the the, given the advent of technology, both the good side in terms of road safety and the bad side. Uh, in terms of it causing accidents. And, and, I, and I illustrate that point, and it really brought it home to me. Um, I uh, hired a new staff person uh, a few years ago, and we're in the car and we're going to an event, and the next thing I know, um, he's got a steering wheel, he's using his knees to steer um, while he's texting. And I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just sending a text letting them know we're late. I'm like, no, you'll put your hands on the wheel, and if you want to continue working for me, you will never do that again. But he was about 25, and it just seemed perfectly normal to him. He goes, we all do it. And I'm like, whoa, this is a problem. Um, so it's really great to be here today to be able to talk to you about what is, I think, increasingly um, a public policy issue that requires significant, significant attention, uh, and that is uh, road safety, and especially with the, uh, the advent and the changes that are taking place uh, with technology. So with that, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to welcome everyone uh, here to Victoria, as we know it, as uh, here in British Columbia, the city of gardens, and increasingly of separated bike lanes. Uh, and I want to begin by thanking the many partners represented here who are engaged in the road safety strategy with us, and working towards Vision Zero. It is a vital goal, uh, not just for people going about their lives, but for the paramedic who fights to save a victim after a crash, for the police officer who has to notify next of kin when those efforts to revive are unsuccessful, for the judge or jury members who must view terrible images in the course of, ass of assessing culpability, 
and of course the family members and friends left behind. While road crashes still claim 285 British Columbians on average each year, the effects are exponential. So as a public safety minister, I want to offer my sincere thanks to each of you for sharing your expertise and time at this conference and the 27 that have preceded it since 1982. British Columbia was the first province in Canada to adopt and commit to Vision Zero. Many of you have helped to make that happen and continue help to help to sustain that vision. I also want to offer special thanks to the dozens of people and organizations working with us through road safety strategy committees. They were created to help advance our province towards its goal of having the safest roads in North America. Before we delve into road safety strategy and some of its recent successes, it's appropriate to acknowledge a perceived threat to the life-saving progress that we've seen on our roads in recent years. And it's not just cell phones. In this case, it's legal, non-medical cannabis. We have done considerable public engagement, and we've learned from that, uh, and the correspondence that my office gets, and from recent focus groups with parents, youth, and others, that there is a real concern about the impact of federal legalization of cannabis on road safety. So a key priority right now, with other levels of government, and ICBC, the Insurance Corporation of British Columbia, and road safety partners, on being as clear as possible about what you can and cannot do, and the consequences of breaking the law when legalization comes into being. We're targeting in particular those younger demographics who are proportionately heavier users of cannabis products and who have less experience behind the wheel. And we're doing this in ways that researchers tell us will get the message across. On the legal side, we're toughening regulations to further deter drug-affected driving. Amendments to the Motor Vehicle Act, which were just passed this session, will provide police with new tools to remove drug-affected drivers from the road. Specifically, we've created a new 90-day administrative driving prohibition for drug-affected driving, and we've expanded the current zero-tolerance restrictions for the presence of alcohol for drivers in the graduated licensing program to include zero tolerance for the presence of THC. We're also building on frontline training to ensure that officers can effectively combat drug-affected driving. And we're preparing effectively and in as timely a manner as we can to provide road users with good information and to help prevent an increase in drug-affected driving post-legalization. The other key issue that we're taking action on is distracted driving the guy that wants to drive using the cell phone or the steering wheel with his knees while he texts. Um, we know that approximately one quarter of all fatal crashes in British Columbia have distracted driving and inattention as a contributing factor. We've more than doubled fines for use of an electronic device to $368 from $167. We've increased the penalty points applied to a driver's record from three to four points with, re with repeat offenders facing up to a 12-month driving prohibition. And as, as of March of this year, distracted drivers will also pay a driver risk premium. But we know that there's a lot more work to be done. Our governments and the Insurance Corporation of BC and police have launched two pilot programs to explore how technology can help combat distracted driving in our province. We're hopeful that by raising awareness better educating BC drivers and implementing new tough penalties, we can help deter people from making the dangerous choice to use their electronic device while behind the wheel. And just to illustrate how serious this is, um, a few months ago in Vancouver, we had a police officer stop uh, a driver uh, for distracted driving, issue them a ticket because they were using their cell phone while driving. And not more than three blocks later, uh, the idiot got pulled over again by another police officer for doing exactly the same thing. Um, it made quite the news story, but again, it's, it, it is going to take a lot of work to get a message home to people who seem to think that, um, you know, it's a perfectly safe thing to do when we all know it's not. On top of that, even if we could ensure every driver out of there was sober, medically fit, and 100% focused on the road, we know we'd still fall short of Vision Zero 
And that's not a reflection on road safety experts, legislators, and road, user, road users. The simple fact is, is people make mistakes. So we're looking at how we can create an environment that mitigates the risks to life and limb. For years, local governments have asked for help to inform their decisions towards safer roads and neighborhoods. And today, I'm happy to announce that Road Safety BC is greatly expanding its response with the release of modules two and three of the BC Community Road Safety Toolkit. The toolkit supports the road safety strategy and the province's vision of bringing British Columbia one step closer towards the ultimate goal of zero traffic fatalities and zero serious injuries. Module two provides strategies aimed at improving road safety outcomes for all road users by promoting safe road designs and traffic engineering strategies. Module three introduces a series of implementa implementation tools and strategies, all aimed at helping communities plan their road safety activities and efforts more effectively. These resources that promote best practices will, will complement the first module, which was released in December of 2016. I truly hope that local governments will consider implementing some of the road safety measures highlighted in these modules. Many of these proven designs involve a modest cost, but pay dividends that are priceless. And when you consider the disproportionate progress we made in saving the lives of those in passenger, passenger vehicles, vis-a-vis -vis the growing number of people traveling on two feet or two wheels, the opportunities to build a safer road system are only becoming more important. Another recent success that was achieved through road safety st strategy partnerships deserves mention. Last October, the Be Truck Aware initiative was launched. It combined some dramatic education and awareness efforts with enforcement by both police and commercial vehicle safety officers. The purpose of this campaign was to educate passenger vehicles on the, way to, on the ways to safely drive around large commercial trucks. Anyone who's questioned the need for this campaign only had to watch some of the truckers' dash cam video that was used in the materials. In conclusion, I want to thank everyone for attending this year's conference. There's a lot of exciting speakers, panels, and discussion sessions. Only through a shared effort can we truly see a sustained and progressive move towards Vision Zero in British Columbia. I want to thank you all for your attendance. Enjoy the, uh, the conference and know that you are doing extremely important work that is going to improve uh, the health and safety and save the lives of a lot of British Columbians. Thanks very much.